So we have two days left for the um, first bid and situations of uh, Jamal Charlo's uh, belt, where it's, whether it's going to be vacated or certain things between him and uh, Baccarat. And right now, uh, it looks like Baccarat is not uh, leaning towards, well, not Baccarat because he's not in charge of it, but the IVF. It looks like they're not gonna mandate um, Tim Zoo for the uh, for the belt as far as um, fighting for the belt when it's vacated or whatever. Looks like at this point right now, um, Bakaram has other options. Um, I don't know. I'm what I guess um, Tim Zoo was had to start fighting guys. According to them, I guess he'll have to start fighting guys in the IVF. I guess he'll have to start fighting IVF sanctioned fights, or I guess he'll have to wait on wait on Bakaran to uh, do what he does. But it feel like this, the time timeline is gonna get pushed back because now I was thinking that Tim Zoo probably will be at uh, 168. I mean 160 at um, the end of uh, next year, but it's probably looking like early next year that he'll probably end up in that weight class if he's gonna go for uh, undisputed. Because they're saying right now that Baccarat's uh, thinking about taking a um, fight with either uh, Jack Coke. But I was thinking that um, that would probably be expedited a little bit because I thought Xander Zayed would be, be up for a title shot probably in a fight or two. But uh, I guess that will probably happen after all the belts get vacated. But um as far as him and Tim Zoo fighting, it could possibly happen uh, next year if they want to. End of next year, if they want to kind of uh, make things possible as far as uh, getting Bakaram a chance at the belt, like he's been waiting on, so they can try to get through that process and get it out of the way. Because there've been different kind of things going on, allegedly petitions and other things. Uh, he's taking step aside deals, so. He's not going to uh, basically lose his spot or position in order to um, just give it up for, I guess, um, another opportunity. But uh, Tim Zhu has already offered him a fight, so Tim Zhu's not even looking at him as an option no more. That was way a, a long time ago, almost a year ago at this point. So he's not going to um, pay attention to what, what's going on over there. I guess he'll try to basically um, find any more opponents that he can uh, go against, whether that's Leuven or um, I don't think the Charlo thing is going to happen. So uh, I don't know. It's a lot of guys. It's a lot of names out there I've, I've thrown around at times. Who he'll pick next, who knows, you know. Um, depend on, depends on uh, who throws their name out there, you know. Tony Harrison wasn't an option until after uh, Bakaron wasn't an option, so it only depends on what what people want to take, you know, give or take, whatever, what deal they're looking for, certain amount of money, different things like that. I don't think Tim Zoo's uh going to be the person who's going to be waiting on anybody. If he was, he would have already been waiting on Bakaron, but he has to show he's going to do that. And I wouldn't want him to do that because now they'll slow down the process of what's going on with 154. If he can just keep fighting, and then everybody will notice after a while. I don't know if they're trying to have a uh, fight for 154, but we could have just went straight into that. You know what I'm saying with the um, the belts since he's been waiting so long. But it's still a process at the end of the day. I can't say I've never seen anything like that happen before, but it's happened before that the belts uh be vacated and then the, the lower ranked guy he'll come up fight the guy who's basically uh the mandatory for the other champion and vice versa so it's different things that happen that's why uh it's almost it's the same thing as when uh tony harrison came up and he fought um uh tim zoo and replaced instead of uh baccarat taking the deal that he turned down so that'll be something easy but i like I said, Jamal Charlo doesn't look. I mean, Jamal Charlo doesn't look at uh, Tim Zhu or any of these guys in 154 as a big fight. Um, hopefully, he doesn't get passed in the process as far as 
Tibbs who going to 54 and 60, and then possibly within the next year or two, him fighting um, him fighting better guys or guys. Because you, you got to think about it. Tim Zhu already beat Tony Harrison now. And somebody, Jamel Charlo, already beat. So, who's the other guy? Brian Castano? Brian Castano don't sound like he want to fight Tim Zhu. He could have been through his uh, name in uh, the ring as far as uh, before Alcampo or anybody. But I don't think he's looking for that opportunity to fight Tim Zhu. And that, that right there shows me a lot, too. Because now guys are trying to wait him out and see if he can get out of the division. It's not really a good idea. Not at this point. If he's really steamrolling guys and he's already active in the same position he was before, that won't really work out like that. We got to do a better job as far as um, these mandatories, too, man. Because at the end of the day, it's not just uh, Jamel Charlo's process. They've been slow as far as getting the fights through. And the sanctioning bodies and things like that, and the mandatories is also with um, Tyson Fury. Though he's held the belt so for a long time without actually fighting any kind of fights that people would want to see. I don't know what kind of mandatories he's fought. I guess the um, I guess you could say uh, the Canelo fight. I guess they made it a mandatory. So any fight can be made a mandatory, and that's that slows the process down. We're not really going through rankings no more. And I feel like Tim Zhu, he has to have a, a way bigger opportunity than what he's getting. Because a lot of people, they're trying to uh, overshadow certain kind of matchups that are supposed to happen. That's why I said that 154 division is not where it needs to be right now. It's definitely not. No no way a guy like Tim Zhu should be in a position where he's waiting on another, a guy who's a mandatory for somebody else. Uh for the process to go through. But I understand they want to uh, latch on to the belts. And, I mean, if you can get a belt by just uh, not really fighting anybody, why not? You know what I'm saying? They already know the process. I'm pretty sure they know that uh, Charlo's not serious about taking the fight or um, uh, fighting back around with Tim Zoo. So they're like, well, we can just wait out Tim Zoo and then we can just get the fight that way. Will it work? I don't know. But that's the way they're trying to use it. And it's not really um, good right now to be doing things like that because now people are going to uh, try to uh, basically call you out and take you out on your offer as far as nobody trying to fight. But uh, Bakaram saying he has Jack Koke as a... Uh, basically, they're having Jack Koke come up as a um, the guy who's going to fight for the mandatory belt at 154. Man, I do not want to see that fight, man. I don't want to see Koke fight uh, Bakaram. That's not even a fight. Koke, man, he's been he's been contending for the belt for six, seven years, man. If he hasn't got, a ch got it by now, man, it's time to hang it up. For real, at one weight class? Man, look. When, uh, when Danny Garcia was at 147, everybody's like, well, we don't want to see Danny Garcia. He's been trying to get that belt forever. He's been trying to get a belt forever. All he's trying to do is, um, he's not winning any big fights at, uh, 147. Well, Joe, Jack Koke ain't won that many big fights. He's he's won uh, a lot of fights in a row lately. Well, it's not none of the guys that we will fear. There's some names, some undefeated guys, but it's not some, some guys that's contending uh, for a top position at this point. So for him to, um, for Jack Koke to be the, uh, the guy, um, that's an option. That's, come on, man. We, we, we fighting guys that Andre fought six, seven years ago. Come on, man. Tim Zhu just getting, he's just getting the Andre treatment. Now we fighting Jack Koke. I didn't seen this before. See, it's going. I'm soon. I'm gonna make a video about how uh, Tim Zhu and uh, Dimitri Andre got similarities. I already made that video before, but it just man, it looks like a whirlwind. I've seen this before. Jack Koke at 154. I don't know. See, when he when Andre fought him, he was a joke. Now Bakaram fighting him, he is a serious contender. Come on, man. This is the kind of stuff that's going on in the box of the online. 154, Ben had better fights. We could have put those other fights together as mandatory. This fight here is just trash. I don't like this fight. 
I don't like it. I want to see Tim Zoo fight against him. He's been waiting on the opportunity at uh, all the belts for a long time. I'd rather see Tim Zoo fight him than to wait on um, the other guy because right now it wouldn't be a better option. And I know that already. Man, it's going to slow the division down. Now you're going to have Erickson Lubin and all these other guys. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to have Tim Zhu do all the heavy lifting. And then these other guys come through and they just fight on uh, Jack Coke and they get a belt. Crazy. It's crazy that Tim Zhu... Once Tim Zhu offered him to fight, he didn't want it. He should have got dropped from the rankings. I'm disappointed. If that was me, they would have dropped me from the rankings. They were like, oh, we don't even know him. We don't know him. Drop him from the, the rankings. Have somebody else come up. Man, this dude was around before Tim Zoo was. And then people think Tim Zoo been waiting a long time. Bacaron has. But Tim Zoo ain't turned down no fights. Bacaron is. That's becoming a bad situation, man. It's becoming real bad. Because now... We have guys that's not even um, fighting contenders that's getting chances at a belt. Erickson Lubin got to fight a hard fight. Jesus Ramos. They could have just fought Jack Coke and went up to fight Bacaron or something like that. But they're taking a hard route. I'm telling you, hey, a lot of these guys, they're going to they gonna be career 154 pounders. Notice how none, none of those guys are talking about uh, moving up like uh, Tim Zoo saying. They haven't said one thing about it. Tim Zoo talk call out Charlo and nah, all everybody else like, oh yeah, I'll fight Charlo. Man, you know this man has a uh, a mandatory. And then Tim Zoo like, who calls out Charlo? Oh, Bacaron. I'm like, I am. Oh, well, I'll fight you. I'll fight you for a belt. Let's go. Nope, doesn't want to fight for the belt. So it's going to be a long, long process. I think they're probably going to wait till all the belts become available. At least when uh, Tim Zhu got some and uh, Bacaron got some belts, and then they'll probably make that a uh, somewhat of a uh, big fight. I wouldn't say it's a super fight because a lot of people don't know Bacaron over here. If it's undisputed, it would be big, but... I don't think it'd be a big, big fight at this point because Bakram, he gotta, he gotta make sure he's uh doing some stuff because now we're in the process now waiting on him. Now it's gonna go from waiting on Charlo to waiting on Bakram, and then Bakram will act like I don't know why people are waiting on me for. Yeah, you you know why we wait. You want this attention, you got it. You want it, you got it. I don't think. And then the Josh Kelly fight. I would have seen if he would have fought Josh Kelly or something. But uh, him fighting Jack Coke, that don't make any sense. I ain't like that fight. Then the other um, 154, I forgot what the guy's name was from uh, London. Uh, he was available as well. So. But I don't see uh, Tim Zhu fighting, uh, hearing names as far as him fighting uh, Virgil Ortiz or Boots Ennis. That's not going to happen at this point. Carlos Adamas, he's at 60. He's worried about Janovic. Janovic won't fight Tim Zhu soon. That'll be a way down the line fight. Laura, he's not really, I don't know. Him and that, the Danny Garcia and Tim Zhu thing could come become a thing, but... Laura already had a uh, fight lined up with uh, Danny Garcia. So we'll have to basically see. I don't know at this time what's really uh, a big fight for most of these guys. Because most of these guys already have losses and they're trying to get back in the picture. They don't really have any uh, stable situation right now as far as fights. And then um, with Tim Zhu, he's trying to fight basically in Vegas or somewhere soon so he can have like a little showcase. And I know he's probably going to want a bigger name and or probably on the same level as uh, names he's, he's had uh, 
over in Australia. Especially like the last couple of guys he's had, so he's probably looking towards something big. Uh could fight Lubin, could fight somebody else. Anything can happen at this point. That'll be a nice fight to watch. Well with Erickson Lubin. I would actually like that fight. Um that's the only kind of watchable fight I would want to see right now. Everybody else is either too young or just... I wouldn't want to see it if I'm going to um, give myself a reason not to uh, focus on a round fight. If I want to focus on a round fight, then I'll just be like, okay, I'll watch um, Erickson Lubin fight. Because I would think in my mind that Erickson Lubin is probably a little bit better than Baccaron. Just from the fights he's won and different things he's done. So he would be a better name to fight than what uh, Tim Zhu is. I think that would be a very good option. If I had to take a good guess today and, and guess what fight, I would say that one. But I feel like a wild card is still available. So I wouldn't just say, all right, yeah, Erickson Lubin, I guarantee. I'm like 50% sure on that, but there's still some other people that's available. I haven't really went down that process yet because now I'm still trying to figure out Okay, when is uh, Baccarat gonna get the belts, and when is he gonna announce his next fight, and who's gonna, uh, what mandatory is he gonna get for the IVF belt? It's not gonna be Tim Zhu. How can Tim Zhu not be a, a mandatory though? Like, who does he have to fight? How many times, and what dates? He fought three times this year. He can't get no other options at a belt. They need to force um Baccarat to fight, man. He hasn't done anything with. To where he can um, avoid guys. And, I mean, I understand he's taking step, step aside money. He's already in a situation. He has an agreement he uh, already agreed to. But not fighting Tim Zoo, that doesn't even make any sense. At all. I just like with the whole Canelo thing. When Canelo was like, oh, I'm fighting. I can fight Benavidez, who's technically higher ranked than uh, Caleb Plant, but I'm going to fight Caleb Plant because he has the belt. And basically, Baccarat will get an excuse like, hey, um, I got the belt over here. So that's kind of what I'm waiting on. I'm not really waiting on uh, if uh, if Tim Zhu wants to fight or not. I'm already taking step aside money, which is true, bro. If, if you're any person, realistically, this is the only excuse I can give. Any person out there, if, somebody, if somebody's giving you free money to just sit around and wait, you'll take the money. Guaranteed. Especially if it's up to a million dollars. Guaranteed. Six figures still, you'll take it. It's free money. Somebody telling you, yeah, wait around on me. And then you'll still be able to get a payday after you get waiting around on the money? Yeah, you're going to wait on the money. That's guaranteed. Why not? So I'm not saying anything that's crazy or out of the ordinary. Or why would he do this and why would he take that much money? No, that's about the right. That's right about the uh, the right amount, I would say. Somebody give you about six figures, a million dollars. You are gonna sit there and wait, and you're still fighting. And at the end of those like easy fights you have, you gonna have a bigger payday. That's why he's doing. He's kind of milking. That's why you gotta respect what Tim Zoo doing. Tim Zoo, he hasn't been waiting as long as Vakaram has. He could have said, man, I'm going to take step side money, too. And I'm going to do other things on my way. And the company I'm with or that I associate with, I don't want them to give me the hard fights. Give me the easier fights that these other guys get. Give me somebody who lost already. That, uh, But but he's a name everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? Kind of stuff that's going on. He's taking real fights. He's taking real fights. A lot of guys he's fighting is top caliber guys. And then Mendoza's already been on a, a winning streak this year and doing certain things. And then turns around and he destroys it. But uh, what I want to know is how long would Tim Zhu really wait on a 154 match? I feel like at a certain point, he'll just say, my brother's at 154, so I'll probably just move ahead and Cause that's what really the point he's at right now. He's like, um, eventually he knows his brother's gonna be developing at 154, and he's gonna move ahead. And whoever ran from him at 154, his brother's gonna go get him. Nikita Zoo 
is developing right now. If you don't get on Tim Zhu and try to destroy him before his brother come up, you're going to have a hard time because you're going to either have to fight him or his brother. And then if you try to move up in weight, Tim Zhu going to fight you up there. You're going to get destroyed up there. Because I don't know uh, how better or how much his power will go up if he fights at 160 instead of 154. His power might carry well. Like I said with Danny Garcia, Danny Garcia's power – carries way better at 154 than it did at 147. That weight cutting and stuff, that stuff real. Because your body can be growing, but you already got the build at 47, so why would somebody, just like with Earl Spence. Earl Spence's body was still growing, but he was at 147, so he's like, man, I can't give up the build at 147, and I already got it. Why would I not try to at least make weight? But those certain things start to kick in. You're like, man, this, this weight ain't holding back like it used to. Now I'm starting to get heavier. Not saying that Tim's uh, getting heavier or he's not in shape, but uh, moving up to 160 will be good anyways. I mean, he's that good of a fighter where he can do that. If he wasn't, people would already say, man, you should just stay down in a, a lower weight class. But Jamel Charlo, he, um, he's figured out now that uh, he's at a point now where he doesn't want to... Um, just fight just random tough guys. He knows he knows most of these boxers are tough, but I don't know. Some some boxers, you know, after a while they just feel like they don't want to fight down anymore. You know what I'm saying? Like we say, um, over here, a lot of people say uh, Floyd Mayweather messed things up. No, he didn't really mess things up because he gave us Canelo. Like these guys aren't giving us Canelo. Like Jamel could be Tim Zoo could be Jamel. Canelo or something, fighting him and giving him an opportunity. People don't, people aren't like Floyd. We got to kill that narrative. Floyd fought hard fighters. Shoot, Tim do fight hard fighters. So I'm not gonna just throw people in categories like, oh, he just, nah, he gave us Canelo. Canelo's a tough fight. Everybody wanna fight Canelo. Everybody's called out Canelo. And eventually, Tim Zoo gonna put himself in the same position to where Everybody's going to want to take a fight with him. It's going to be a major factor. It's going to be a big risk. And I don't think guys want to put themselves in a position where they're going to get destroyed like that. Look at Brian Mendoza. Brian Mendoza was running through everybody. Now people ain't even thinking about him no more. You see how quick that was? Just like that. Nobody's thinking about him anymore. But uh, that's all I got. Like and subscribe.